Happy Advent! This is the beginning of Advent for 2023 and wishing you a, a warm and joyful Advent season that's filled with all the, I call it the three M's, the, the magic, the mystery, the miracle of this, of this season, this Advent season. As you know, we're not doing, uh, instead of an Advent wreath or an Advent calendar or Advent candles, we're doing an Advent fruitcake. <laughs> and and I don't know if you've ever seen a, or heard of a, a sermon series based on the Advent fruitcake. Last week, we prepped ourselves for it with the pineapple, the symbol of hospitality and and, and graciousness. And the incarnation is God's hospitality to us. And, and we are called in this season to be hospitable to others. Now, this first week, our, our Advent reading is just perfect because Jesus is talking about the fig tree. And part of our Advent uh, fruit for this fruit cake were figs and dates. So this is really, really great that we can, we can do this. And Jesus, let, let's read it, just this little portion here uh, where Jesus talks about, about figs. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. At the very gates, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Now, Jesus used common images to, to convey what it means to be a, a fully whole human. He, he did not come making new laws and establishing new, new propositions and giving us a new creed. Jesus is embodied Torah. He's the fulfillment of the law. But he, he helps to us to understand what it means that he is the fulfillment of the law. And he does so not in points and, and principles, but he does so leveraging common images of the day that people were, were comfortable with and were familiar with. And figs were common sites in Judea. Uh, it was a very accessible and visual uh, metaphor. Figs and dates thrive in Mediterranean climates and were readily available. It was a crop that crossed all socioeconomic levels. The, the rich had it, but the poor had it too. They could just walk out. There's a tree along the path that they were, and they would just pick, pick the figs and pick the dates. So it, it's a standard item for food, a food staple, if you will, for everybody. And so everybody would have had immediately experiences with figs and dates. Now figs um, are symbols of abundance. Um, and we're, we're celebrating in the incarnation a God of abundance, who abundantly, exceedingly abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Think about this, if there's room at the table, if there's always room at the table, if there's, if there's always room for one more, then there'll always be leftovers. Because you don't just cook for those who are there. You're cooking for those who may not be there, but you hope will come. My mother, uh, Mabel Bog Sweet, uh, Sunday dinner is the one meal she cooked every week, but there was an expectation. She cooked them. It was always fried chicken, mashed potatoes with gravy, the best gravy. Uh, mother couldn't cook, but she could cook Sunday meal, Sunday dinner. We called it. It was after church. We still call it dinner. And um, 
she always, there was an expectation that one of us, somebody, and it was open to the whole family, could invite somebody there to the table. So there was always, she was cooking all, always for more than who were there. And so there was enough chicken for everybody plus. And, and you're, you're, you're making enough for surprise guests and being surprised in life and, and, and living out of, not just eking out an existence, but living out of the abundance, the overflow. And figs are, are a symbol of that. A dates, sweetness, um, sweetness and, and growth. Uh, the, 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 the paradox of the, the incarnation that the frailty and fragility of an infant carries with it and within it the promises of the future. That infant, that frail, fragile infant mangers the might and majesty of the very being of God. Or what the poet John Donne used to talk about as the immensity cloistered in thy dear womb. And his little poem to, to Mary. So you have here um, the, the, the image here of the fig and the date and what they symbol. Um, and the, what they symbol in the fruitcake is exactly the same. The figs and dates are abundant in the fruitcake. They provide sweetness. They provide um, also um, longevity because, you know, they keep for a long time. Here's a, here's a date right here. Um, the, this is not the season for figs. So all I could find was fig spread. <laughs> but I got, you got fig spread here and, and some, some dates. And um, these are just snacks. They're, they're staples. They were staples in, in Jesus' day. If you look at figs in the Bible, you see them everywhere. Uh, we begin, the story begins with Adam and Eve disobeying God by eating from the forbidden tree. And they use fig leaves to cover their nakedness. Now, we don't know what kind of tree that forbidden uh, fruit was. Um, there's some, we, we know it wasn't an apple tree. Okay, that's a whole other, a whole other story. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Um, but there are some that they suspect it may have been a fig tree. Deuteronomy 8.8, describing the promised land. Moses mentions figs as one of the land's abundant fruits. It's, it's a land of milk and honey, but there's also fruits here like, like figs. Um, King Solomon's wealth is described with the abundance of fig trees in his kingdom. Um, uh, you got Jesus, of course, and I, I'll get back to this in just a minute, cursing a barren fig tree. Um, but that was symbolizing the, the barrenness of the, the whole Jewish people. And then um, in Luke 13, Jesus tells a parable about a vine dresser who pleads for a barren fig tree to be given another year to bear fruit. Now, the reason why this appears, the vine dresser and the fig appear together, and we often uh, forget this, that... Um, that figs and vines often went together. Um, they, um, they, they were planted together. Um, and um, and that, that's a, so you have underneath fig trees, you have vines. And so you have an easy uh, kind of coming together of these two figs and, and vines and, and they come together in this in this Jesus in this Jesus story. You also have dates throughout the Bible. You got um, dates are also mentioned as one of the signs of the promised land. Um, you got the bride's beauty in the Song of Solomon compared to a cluster of dates. Frankly I don't get that one but that's a whole other <laughs> story. Um, uh, Abimelech, the son of Gideon, uses the image of a date tree to illustrate his claim to, to leadership. You have um, Ezra um, coming together with these celebrations and meals organized, but dates are featured in these celebrations. And then in Revelation, you have dates among the fr fruits that are destroyed by the locust plague. 
Um, so you have the appearance of dates and fruits in the Bible suggesting the same thing, abundance, bountiful provision, um, peace, sweetness, beauty. And, and that, that's, these are all important themes for the, for the Advent season. Now, what, what's going on here with, um, with Jesus using this, this story is that fig trees, Jesus is saying, signal the approaching summer. The leaves of the fig tree signal that summer is coming. And that the fig tree is ready to bear fruit when the summer arrives. So the disciples should be ready for the challenges that are lying ahead. So to be in a state of readiness watchfulness, uh, waitingness, if you will. And just as the fig tree naturally produces leaves and then fruit, so we, Jesus' followers, are called to naturally bear the fruit of the Spirit. Notice, notice the singular. Fruit of the Spirit is a cluster. It's a cornucopia. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Um, now, the other time we have a fig tree featured is a fruitless tree. Here we have Jesus talking about a flourishing fig tree. The other time it appears is with Jesus talking about a fruitless fig tree. And this is the story with one of Jesus' anger episodes, the story of him cursing the fig tree. Uh, I don't know how you would define a bad day. <laughs> What's a bad day? Um, a bad day is when Murphy's Law takes over. Uh, all of us have had those days. Um, a bad day is when your hair has a mind of its own. Uh, we've all had those days. But the definition of a bad day for Jesus was when he curses a fig tree in the morning, then in the afternoon throws the temple tantrum. Um, and that's, that's a very bad, bad day. And that's a Jesus bad day. Um, now, the, the, the story about this, this cursing of the fig tree, let, let's get this right. Jesus looks at this fig tree in the distance. He's hungry. And again, figs are very abundant. And it's lush with leaves. So he walks over towards it to pick one of the one of the figs. Now, again, all I got is the, the spread, but let's, but here's a date. So we'll pretend this is a fig right here. But so he walks over and when he gets to it, he realizes this tree is lush with leaves, but it's barren of fruit. Now, there's one other translation that says that it wasn't the season to bear fruit even. But we also have clearly stated, this is 2 Timothy 4.2, that in season or out of season, we are to be ready when the Messiah calls, when it's a me that messianic moment for us to give witness or give proclamation. Or so, in season or out of season, we're to be ready, prepared. And here was a fig tree that was hoarding all of its juices for itself, so it could look pretty and beautiful. It was lush and and just. In, fo in foliage and leaves. But it was barren of fruit for a hungry Messiah and a hungry world. And so Jesus uses the fig tree, both a fruitless fig tree and a flourishing fig tree. Um, and it's a powerful image here. Um, of what it means to have fruit and faith together. There's no fruit without faith. And there's no faith without fruit. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. That's John 15, 4. You can't bear fruit on your own. We only bear fruit by abiding 
in Jesus. And so if you are connected to the vine, uh, you're, you're good. there's going to be some fruit in your life uh, sometime. And, um, and then we have this incredible passage from Galatians about the fruit of the Spirit, this cluster, this, I call it this cornucopia. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Jesus looks for this fruit. And so this Advent season, this is the fruit that we need to cultivate, the fruit of the Spirit. It's not fruits, because it's all from the same vine. So it's a, it's a multi-layered fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Here's the big one, self-control. So Jesus is joining the disciples to be in a state of watchfulness and waiting, which is what Advent is. It's a season when we wait and prepare. But waiting has two meanings. And but this is where we're going to end today, um, this waiting scenario. Waiting means both preparing yourself uh, wait on the Lord. It means getting yourself ready, which is what the disciples were called to do. We're getting, Adventist is a time of readiness for the arrival of Jesus. But while you're waiting, um, so you're waiting on the Lord, you're also serving. And this is the other meaning of wait, waiter. Waiting, waiting tables. You're just not kind of soporific and and insouciant about, well, you know, I'm just going to wait here until... No, while you're waiting, you're waiting. You wait to wait. And waiting involves serving. And so you, you keep serving. And, and the waiter serves tables, but the Levites and priests waited in the tabernacle or the temple. That's what they were called doing. They were waiting. And wait means yes, to persevere and pray, which is what, what Moses on the mount, Daniel by the river, Paul in the temple, the twelve in the upper room, they waited. They tarried till the Lord's timing. They waited. But while you're waiting, you wait, you serve, you take care of the least and the lost, and you open up your table for the stranger, for the, for the guest, and you cook for more than those who are there, which means a sign that you're waiting, there will always be leftovers. There's always leftovers. So we wait as we wait for this Advent season, the first Sunday in Advent, in our Advent fruitcake, the importance of figs and dates. We wait to wait.